Have you ever tried to engrave on a transparent material like glass and absolutely failed? Because I have, I've done loads of testing, I've worked out the optimum way to do this. So if you would like to learn how to engrave directly onto glass, using your X-Tool F2 or any diode laser, then you are in the right place. We are gonna be running through the full setup, the full preparation, the full material settings, and then finally, I'm gonna show you the results. So stick around if you'd like to learn how. Let's run through the materials we'll need for this today. So we have our glass item. This is a cheap glass that I've got from the shop. There is nothing special about it. I am using something called tempera paint. I've done a lot of testing, which I'll show you in a minute. And this, in my opinion, is what gives the best results. But that is open to interpretation. And then we're gonna be using a standard paintbrush and a pot to obviously apply that. Now, moving on to different ways of doing it. As I said, we are gonna be using tempera paint. However, there are certain things you can use in their place. You've got chalk markers. These are pens that you can apply really easily onto it. And also you can get the same stuff, but in a spray can version. However, I have done testing with both of these and I will show you the results now, just so you know why I'm going with this one. And I found with the chalk markers, I did a lot of testing and no matter what I did, I just got a lot of consistent flaking and chipping and it felt really rough. And I really tried so many different combinations there. I didn't like it, so I didn't want to recommend this method to you. Therefore, I did the same testing with the tempera paint and I just found I had a much cleaner, consistent finish and it was really smooth to the touch and it just worked. And this went through the dishwasher, this went through the same thing and this one performed absolutely amazingly. So that is why we are gonna be going with this method of tempera paint. It will also help for me to explain the concept of why we need to coat the actual glass. And there is a good reason for it. And that is because if I move you over to the laser here, you can see the lights shining down. If you can put that underneath it, the light will pass directly through it. There is nothing for it to make contact with, which means if you try to laser engrave on it, the light travels through. It doesn't impact, which means it doesn't cause any kind of marking. What we need to do to trick the machine into engraving it is put some kind of coating in place down. It allows it to make contact and actually apply some heat and that will get our reaction to give us our actual coating. This is the reason we need to do this. With more powerful lasers or UV lasers, you don't need to do that. But in this case, we will need to do that. So the first thing we're gonna do is apply a coat of paint onto this using our paintbrush. So let's do that now. One other point to note is before you do this, you might wanna get an alcohol spray and just give this a wipe so there aren't any fingerprints. But in this this case I think we'll go ahead we are absolutely fine naturally we're gonna pour a little bit of paint in there you don't need lots this stuff is very sparing it goes a long way and we're just gonna get our paintbrush dab it in there and all we're gonna do is try to paint a nice consistent coat down the side of the glass simple as that what I will say is try to achieve an even spread because thicker paint will be harder to engrave through. But there you go, it's as simple as that. If you're only marking a small area, you need to put a little tiny dab. If you're trying to do more of a full wrap, then you would obviously need to coat the whole thing. But there we go, we are gonna let that dry. I, in my experience, it takes between 30 and 40 minutes to dry. So if you're gonna do a batch of them, just do them all at once, put them on the side, let them dry, and you're good to go. So our paint has dried, and as you can see, it's relatively smooth. I do have a couple of thick patches which may prove trouble them to engrave through. One thing we do need to try and make sure is that we can actually mount it onto the laser bed. And as you can see, in my case, I have got a bit of a tapered edge on this. So it's going to be a bit of a challenge. So there's two options. You can either use something like blue tack or clay putty and try and press it onto it because we want it naturally straight. Or in this case, to make my life a little bit easier is I use a self-centering jig to try and ultimately tie in the thing. So I'll twist it, it'll grip the sides of this. You have to be careful though still, but obviously even with our conical shape there, it's not straight. We are gonna do a combination of a self-centering jig to keep it restrained there and a bit of blue tack for it to sit into. And between those two things, what we have, and then we've got a bit of adjustment here as well. So there you have it, we have it positioned. It's straight, we're good. I'm gonna now focus the laser. In my opinion, it's good practice to manually focus the laser. You can see our two dots are not joined together, so we need to use the knob on the side. We're gonna be turning it anti-clockwise to bring the laser head down and that will join those two dots together. And now we are happy that the laser head is focused to the optimum height of the top surface. Let's move over to Xtool Studio. So here we are, we are on our Xtool Studio screen and we're gonna get straight into this one. So new project in the top right, 
we're going to click that. That will open up Xtool Studio. And with the new update, you're going to see an updated picture if you've got an Xtool F2. And there you go, we can see our glass. One thing I will say, it's not quite straight at the moment, but we can adjust that when we frame. We're going to continue as it is, but because we've manually focused, we know what we see represents what we need to engrave on. The other thing I need to mention is this is quite a narrow spherical item, which means if we try and engrave something too wide, it just won't make the right impact because the laser will hit it at an angle and bounce off without actually fully impacting it. So I'm going to go for a fairly small design because I have a fairly small glass. However, the settings I'm going to share with you later, they'll work on larger or smaller designs. So you can use them on whatever kind of glass or bottle you've got. So the first thing we are going to do is we are going to move straight in and import our SVG. So in this case, I've got an SVG. I got it from Creative Fabrica. It's a really good website. And from experience, I'm going to say something 30 millimeters wide is about the maximum I'm going to go with this glass just because it's so narrow. So we're going to adjust the width here to 30 millimeters. But overall, it's pretty good. We know because we've got it in the self-centering jig, it's centrally aligned down the middle. So if I line it up with this middle line here, that means I'm pretty good. It's just a case of putting it where we want. As you can see, this one says adulting requires alcohol. Yeah, sometimes it definitely does. I am going to change it to a red layer just so you can see it. But this is a nice, simple one. I think what we will also do with this, just to make the most of it, is I'm going to add some elements as well. So elements are within the left-hand tool tabs. So on the left, I found this crown, and maybe we can just resize it so it sits on top of it. That'd look quite cool. I think that works. So I'm going to reposition the whole design. So to make this centrally aligned to this, what we're going to do is select it by dragging a box. We're going to click the align bit there and horizontal align. And we now know the two things are pretty much in the right position. So there we go. We're good there. We've got our actual design nice and simple. This one nice and quick. So we're now going to move on to applying our material settings. At this point, I'd like to ask you to subscribe to the channel and like if you feel like you're benefiting and you're enjoying the content. If you would like early access to all of my videos when I'm releasing them from now on, and you'd like priority replies from me and some nice little badges, feel free to join the Chris from L3D channel. Click that join button below. Now let's move on and apply our settings. Okay, so here we have it. We're gonna get our materials selected now. So up here, I've got a predefined material. I have set one up because I've done a load of testing as you saw at the start of the video. This one is called Glass Tempera and I'm gonna click apply. So now if you see, I've got a setup and what I use and what works well is blue light, 80% power, 190 speed and 160 lines per centimeter. You might wanna add a second pass if you've added too thick a layer of paint and it doesn't look right, but that's completely up to you. In this case, I'm gonna try one pass, we'll assess and if we need to do a second pass, we'll do a second pass. What we need to do now is we need to manually frame this design, one, to make sure it's central, two, to make sure it's straight, and three, to make sure we think it's actually gonna fit on that curvature. So let me show you how to do that. Down in the bottom right, you are gonna see a little down arrow. In this case, I've got my light power set to 10. You probably want it because we're projecting this light onto a dark surface. The rectangular mode will just do a box for your design, which is probably okay in this case. However, I am gonna do an outline design just to show you what it looks like. And that should then draw a line around everything so we can really see where it's gonna go. So let's click the little box here and let's move over and see that framing. It's quite hard to see, but in terms of positioning, I think that's gonna be absolutely fine. I am gonna rotate this slightly to make it straighter but we are now good so let's move back over now that we know we're framed we're going to click the process button down here we're not going to change any of the processing modes and as you can see this one's going to take one minute 40 which is pretty quick really let's click that start button hear the beep and we'll move over and see how this thing turns out one point i really want to stress at this is we are going to be using the blue laser which is very bright and it can damage your eyes because our glass actually protrudes further than the enclosure all we can do in this case is lower it as close as possible without upsetting the actual positioning so what we want is to make sure we're wearing our laser safety glasses for this i'll be putting mine on in a second and then our extraction also needs to be set up and working make sure you have both of those things let's move on and see how this does
there we have it. We have our finished engraving and you can't really tell at the moment how well it looks. However, what I will say, based on that, it looks very even and very clear. I will go and clear this off. The way you clean this paint off, by the way, is just run it under some hot water, give it a little wipe either with a cloth or with your hands and it should clear. I'll go and do that now and then we will see the finished results and if it has worked. There you have it. We have our finished results. I've put something dark behind it just to allow you to really see that contrast. We've got a super clean, smooth finish. It is smooth to touch. There is no chip in. And as you can see, it just looks absolutely amazing and they look really premium. So you could really have a lot of opportunities and a lot of possibilities doing this. So there you have it. We have a successfully engraved glass. Hopefully you've learned something new. If you have, please subscribe to the channel. Please like. If you wanna become a member, feel free to do that. You get early access to these videos and you get better access to me. So thank you so much. Check out our Facebook groups in the description. And if you're interested in buying an Xtool F2, check out those affiliate links as well. Thank you very, very much for watching and have a great day, guys.